In today's video, I show you how to make this DM screen with the built-in monitor using the Algo Laser 22 watt diode. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you what the GGGGs are for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of December of 2023, we have this printed and painted Battlefield Builder terrain set. We have two pledges for the Battlefield Builder Kickstarter that's going on right now. We have two pledges for the DecoQuest Strongberg Kickstarter that's going on right now. We have three people receiving these wound trackers that can be placed on bases. And then finally, we have $100 going towards the crowdfunding campaign, which my Patreon supporters are voting upon. Go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page to find out more information about how you can get a chance to be chosen by Bob for one of these gratitude gifts. So the inspiration for this project comes from someone called Power Word Spill. He actually creates a couple of videos regarding crafting for uh, Dungeons and Dragons and being a DM. And in his video, he basically shows you how to create this DM screen by using a simple razor knife straight edge, so no tools involved. And he provided a free PDF to be able to do this build. And when I looked at it, I thought, man, this is super cool. I would love to do that. But because I have access to a laser like this, um, it would make the project a hundred times easier since you're not hand cutting all of the layers for the three millimeter plywood. So I went ahead and called up one of my friends, Zykit. Jason from Zykit actually has uh, a couple of Kickstarters that I promoted on my channel, typically for 3D printed terrain, fantasy terrain, um, DM. Actually, he created a DM screen that you can 3D print. But I knew that he actually creates SVG files for lasers. So go ahead and use the link below to go to his website where you can see a number of SVG files that he has for sale there at a reasonable price if you do have a laser and would like some projects, especially this time of year when it is time to give gifts for folks. There are some awesome gifts available for your gaming friends. So I did reach out to him since I didn't really know how to create SVG files and asked if he would be willing to create some borders that I would be able to engrave on and create a design on my DM screen. And he was kind enough to um, collaborate with me in creating that. So that is gonna be available on his website as well. And I think he's also gonna be creating a video about how he went about making these, um, making this so that you might be able to utilize some of the tools that he uses to do that. And I, as I understand, it's relatively simple. So he was able to produce this awesome fantasy version, but later on, I'm, I'm gonna also show you a sci-fi version that I'm gonna be using for Traveler. So whatever theme that, uh, or game that you are running, you're gonna be able to swap this out because here is a super cool thing about this version of the DM screen, and that is that this is magnetized. So you can actually swap these out. And uh, because it's magnetized, I don't have to tape this monitor into the screen permanently, but I can remove it if I need to, if I need to replace it or clean it or whatnot. So that's one of the things that I also like about this version as well. So use the timestamps if you wanna go see more in detail about how I made these pieces, how I cut out these pieces. But before we get into that, I do wanna share really quickly about the Algo Laser 22 watt. So they did send this to me for review and this was the project that I used to test out this laser. Now I've received a lot of diode lasers and have given them as gratitude gifts here on my channel. But I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, I did end up giving away my X tool uh, in order to keep this one. So this machine has replaced my last favorite dialed laser and that was the X-Tool uh, D1 Pro. And the fact that I replaced that with this one means that I really, really like this machine a lot. So one of the cool features about this machine is that it does come with an LED screen and that is different than a lot of the other dialed lasers that are out there. The reason why I really appreciate that is 
I can see what's going on with the machine. I can see a status report. I can see the files that are in it. All that kinds of stuff that I need to rely on by hooking up my laptop before, I can actually do all of that with the touchpad interface that is directly connected to the machine. So that is a huge bonus and a huge plus. The other reason why I really like this laser is because it was real plug and play. I just plugged it into my machine, figured out which USB port that it was plugged into, and I didn't even have to set up anything in Lightburn in order for my software to recognize this machine. It was really true plug and play. And that is different from all of my other machines where I had to configure it in Lightburn for it to be able to recognize the machine and to be able to use it. In this case, all I did was plug it in. And I highly, highly suggest using Lightburn and the instructions that come with this does um, also include whether or not you're using Lightburn. It, they do have their own software available, I think. I just skipped all of that because I already have Lightburn. And if you're gonna be doing lasering for any uh, period of time, definitely I would suggest paying the $60 to get the G-code version of Lightburn after the 30-day free trial is over because it is well worth it. It's just going to make your life so much easier being able to laser uh, with anything. So Lightburn is definitely the way to go. But this machine was able to um, be recognized by it and I was able to just uh, plug it in and run it right away. The other unique thing about this is this actually came in a large box because typically these diode lasers are unassembled where each one of these rails you have to put together. So typically the box is relatively small, but this came with the frame already assembled. And the only thing I had to put on it was this uh, crossbar with the actual laser on it. And that took less than 10 minutes for me to be able to put it on. Just required an Allen wrench and a couple of screws. And this does come with a toolkit that provides all the tools that you need in addition to some extra um, lenses that you can stick on the end uh, once that wears out. So overall, super impressed with this machine and really um, have been able to uh, test it out. And as you can see with this project, uh, was able to uh, use it effectively. And as you can see, it cuts uh, even this quarter inch or six and a half millimeter MDF board that I used for this project um, and it cut it relatively quickly. It was able to engrave very cleanly. So overall, super impressed with this machine. It did come with a pump, um, a built-in pump, which is awesome because that prevents flare-ups. And the great thing also that I really like is that this emergency stop button is green when it is not depressed. So one of the things that I oftentimes get confused by is whether or not the emergency stop button is supposed to be up or down in order for the machine to function. And in this case, it is just clear that it lights up green, indicating that it's ready to go. Another unique feature is that there is a keyed on off switch. Uh, I think that's just in case you wanna keep it off for safety sake so that kids aren't getting into it or turning it on by accident. Oh, one more thing too, is that this comes with a magnetic cover. And the reason why I really like the fact that it's magnetic is sometimes it crashes into the pegs that I used to hold down the wood on my honeycomb bed, which by the way, the honeycomb bed is not included, but I highly suggest using that if you're gonna be lasering because it prevents burnout from the material underneath. But in this case, I do have hold it's holders and they stick up a little bit and sometimes that cover will crash into it. But instead of messing up the entire print, the cover just comes off because it's just flexible with the magnets that are attaching it. And now I actually don't run it with that magnetic cover uh, just because it's a little bit easier for me. And they do provide these orange glasses, safety glasses, so that you're not burning out your eyes with the uh, laser. So you should definitely not be looking or watching. I know it's really tempting to watch the lasering as it happens, but it is harmful for your eyes. So in the least, you should definitely be wearing the uh, glasses that are provided or additionally uh, keeping the cover on. And as I always say with lasers, do not laser indoors. Do it in your garage. I do it outside in my backyard patio. Um, not so much because of the danger of causing fires or anything like that, although that is a consideration. The bigger issue for me is even though I have venting, I set up a actually pretty expensive venting system for my larger 60 watt CO2 laser, and I could use that with this machine. What I found over time is even with an incredible and expensive ventilation system, 
the burning smell that you get from materials, especially with acrylic, is so, you just can't get rid or suck out all of that vapor. And when you are lasering plastic or acrylic, um, that is actually bad for you. That is uh, caustic uh, and poisonous. So you should not really be lasering indoors. If at all possible, you should be doing it outside or at least in your garage that you can vent out regularly. So having said that, this definitely does receive the Gaming Geek seal of approval. So if you're looking into getting a laser, I think this is one of the easiest ones to do. And again, the having the touchscreen panel in the front is sort of a game changer for me and is sort of worth the extra cost just because you know what the status of the machine is, even if it's working correctly. And that's one of the things that I really appreciate about that. But let's go ahead now and transition into this project, which I am super excited about. And again, kudos to Power Word Spill. Go ahead and check out this link here if you want to go look at his original video. He does a fantastic job. And Power Word Spill, if you're watching this video, thanks so much for providing the PDF for the dimensions that you use. Now we tweaked it a little bit so that we could fit the cuts and dimensions onto a 400 by 400, which is the limitations of this machine. But we'll get into that a little bit later. And I do think that he has one of the Gaming Geek tables, if I am uh, correct in his video at least. It looks like the table that I designed. So it's great for us to be collaborating and in the same gaming space where we're learning from each other. So thank you so much, Power Words Phil. But here, um, one of the requests that I did have with uh, Jason from Zykit was that I did want two designs because not only do am I DM for D&D sessions, but check this out. This is the sci-fi version that Jason created because I am going to be starting up Traveler, which is uh, new for me and new for some of my friends who we're going to be going through a campaign together. So super excited about that. And I just love the fact that I can just easily swap out these faces. And here you're seeing a slideshow of just some random pictures that I found online that I created into uh, a slideshow just to be able to show it to my players or obviously during gameplay I'm going to be pulling up the initiative tracker. I'm going to be pulling up pictures of various characters that they're going to be encountering throughout the adventure or uh, ships or worlds or environments. I mean this thing really adds a lot in terms of being a DM and in terms of being able to show character or showing your players uh, things that they're encountering. Obviously, they're going to be hearing music uh, just to add more to the immersion. So I just love that this is such an innovative and fun way to be able to communicate to your players just what's happening within the adventure. Just to help with the imagination, just to be able to have fun together and to be able to present to them some really cool features. And not only can you have still pictures sort of shown up front, that would be really handy, but let me go ahead and show you that you can obviously have video as well. So you can have a video running while you're setting up a narrative or even if after a fight or something like that, you wanna sort of show how all of that went. You can just pull up any video that you want and be able to show it or display it. Not only a sci-fi battle scene like we might have for Traveler in this circumstance here, but also if we wanted to switch over to fantasy and you wanted to show a dragon like we have from this clip from The Hobbit, uh, just again, there's just so much that you can do that I think would be fun and immersive for your, yourself and for your players. So this is just another tool to be able to add to your arsenal as a dungeon master and trying to create these worlds, trying to create these environments for people to be able to enter into and have a sense or idea about what's going on in your mind as well. So not only do I feel like um, this gives concrete examples, but I, I'm of the nature that when you do show things like this, it helps build the theater of the mind and gets the imagination going for your players as well. I know some DMs don't like showing this stuff because they want everything to be sort of uh, imaginative and reliant on players' imaginations, but I, 
I'm of the philosophy that showing or giving a little bit of a seed of what it might look like uh, stirs the imagination and helps them out even more. So I always feel like these aids enhance the experience rather than detracting from it. So this next part of the video, I'm actually gonna walk you through the steps of how I created this screen and you can follow along. I did do a couple of shortcuts just because I had some materials here that um, might cost a little bit more if you wanted to go that route because you can definitely make this entire project just using three millimeter plywood that is specific for lasering or the links that Power Word Spill provided regarding buying everything off of Amazon. So it's relatively simple to do and with the laser that does all the cutting for you and adds the awesome engraving that you see here, um, this is a super easy project uh, with the help of a laser. So let's go ahead and jump into that now. All right, so here are all the pieces that have been laser cut and engraved. So up here are the side panels. So um, one of the things that I wanted to tell you is that for uh, the middle pieces, I have actually this six and a half millimeter MDF board, and that just makes it so that I don't have to cut as many. And if you have some filler pieces or thicker pieces, you can do that. Otherwise, you can go ahead and just cut the three millimeter, a couple sheets of the three millimeter for the um, inserts for the middle. This is the back panel, and then obviously this is a magnetic front panel. So I print, uh, I laser engraved and cut out two of those. So those are the side panels. And then over here is the middle panel. So this is the back side. And then again, I use the six and a half millimeter pieces and I cut out offset um, two of these so that I have two layers. Again, if you're just using the three millimeter, you're gonna need four of those, but I only have two. So this is giving me 13 millimeters of depth which you need 12 at least. So this is giving me a little bit more wiggle room. And you do wanna offset it so that the first layer is like this, and then the second layer is offset so that you have this overlap so you're not creating a weak point where um, the joints are coming together. So that's basically the internal piece. That one goes on the back. And then here are the front panels. So. Basically, they just jig together like this with the magnets going in here so that they can be removable. And it'll be a little bit of a challenge to make sure that I'm gluing these pieces uh, together so that is perfectly square. Overall, it looks pretty good. And then here we have the corner pieces. And the reason why I have it over here is because I am using a sand block just to sand the face of everything. And I have yet to do it because you can see there's a lot of uh, when it cuts or engraves into the wood, there's a lot of this uh, that gets blown onto it. So you want to be able to sand that off. I have yet to determine whether or not I'm going to stain the front face of this or leave it as is. I sort of do like the raw wood. The plywood that I use is just really cheap plywood from Home Depot. Uh, because I bite them in eight foot by four foot sheets and uh, cut them down to size on my table saw. Uh, obviously, if you buy wood from Amazon, you're gonna get a lot lighter wood like this. So the sheets that you buy off of Amazon is giving you, I think this is birch wood, but you can see how dark in comparison is the wood that I got from Amazon. But I do sort of like the unfinished look on this, so we'll wait and see whether or not I'm gonna do that. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and glue the pieces together. Okay, I lied. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is put the magnets in, and I grabbed these six millimeter by three millimeter magnets off of Amazon. I think it was about seven or eight dollars for 150 of them. And one of the first things I do is I mark the end with a Sharpie. That way I know that I'm consistent with my polarity and I push it in this way. So I already stuck some in here. Um, and for some reason, some of these are a tight fit and I don't need any glue, but others of them slide too easily in and out. And so I'm gonna use glue. And the glues that I'm using are E6000. 
as well as just some super glue depending on where I need to place them. So for these that are too loose, I'm going to use E6000 just because it's more goopy. And I just line the inside of it just a little bit. You don't need a ton of glue. Like so. And I'm going to grab this and stick one in there. And then slide it off like this. And then push it in with my thumb, but not too far in. So that it doesn't go down too far in there. And just wait for it to dry. I know it's super tempting to test it. But if you stick another magnet on there now, it will just pull out. And then for these, uh, these uh, seem to fit in pretty well on their own. Although this one is fairly loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it with super glue. So it's in there right now, but it's pretty loose. It'll just pull out if I put a magnet up against it. So what I'm going to try to do with this one is super glue it just by um, putting super glue around the edges. Like that. I know that's a lot of super glue, but we'll just wait for it to dry and see if that works. Um, the reason why I don't mind getting it all over like that is we are going to put covers, corner covers over these so it doesn't matter if it gets messed up like that. Okay, now that um, the super glue is pretty much dried, I'm going to go ahead and add these corner pieces on there. And again, I'm going to use my E6000 to do that. And I want to be careful not to put too much glue on there because if I do end up staining it wherever glue seeps out, that's where um, the stain won't adhere. And I want to make sure I get the area around the magnets the most so that this holds it in place. So put the most glue there and then just add this right on the corner. Move it around a little bit. Then when it's in the position that I want, right on the edge so that it's lined up. I just use clothespins to act as clamps. It did move a little bit. But I'm going to use two clothespins, maybe three, but I'm going to adjust it first to make sure it's squared up again. A third one here. And just do that to all the corners. All right, so once the glue on the frame is dry, go ahead and flip it over. And all of these little pegs that were cut out that you saved from before, we're gonna go ahead and glue them in the holes. Because now they're gonna work as keys when we combine the two together. Now that I have those pegs in, I'm gonna go ahead and glue the um, other side to it. I'm gonna in particular stick, make sure to put glue inside of these holes. And I think I would normally switch at this point to wood glue, but I don't have any right now and store is closed, so I'm just going to use this instead. But I think either one, wood glue would be fine, or if you want to stick with E6000. Because I have the keyholes, it makes lining up super easy. And it is lined up perfectly because of these pegs, which is awesome. Now, if you um, didn't do two pieces, Jason did provide a, a key slot at the, at the bottom of all the pieces so that it slots together. But this is an easier way to do it, I think. And then I actually have these regular wood clamps that I can use to clamp it down. And I'll put two clamps on this. Here's the other side. 
one thing I forgot to mention is make sure that it is offset so that you're not gluing together the same length. See how it's offset here? That's what you want in order to provide a point of gluing. Now with these pieces dry, we're going to combine them together. All right, so now that this is fully dried and is stable, I'm going to go ahead and work on the frame. And because all of the magnets now are glued in, I can go ahead and stick them on. And they are um, exactly in the positions that they need to be. You can adjust it just slightly, just to line things up a little bit better. And then now, gonna glue these corner pieces on over each of the um, corners so that the magnets are covered up and that the frame is now combined. Now you will notice that there is a gap along here so you got to be careful not to get glue into the gap because you don't want this piece gluing on to the uh, frame underneath. And then I make sure that the Magnets have plenty of glue over them. I'm going to stick these pieces on. And then I'll stick clamps on each of the corners, still keeping it on the frame so that the um, whole thing doesn't move around too much. But I'll go ahead and do the four corners before I clamp. All right, so I decided to go ahead and stain it because even though I do like the natural wood color, um, I, I think I want to try to get a little bit of a deeper color to it. So I grabbed some pretty light um, wood stain. This is the Golden Pecan. And I start it with a stick. You can tell it's barely um, any color to it. Which is fine because when I did a, it here on this test, test strip, just having it uh, be on there darkens it quite a bit. So I don't want it to be too dark. So we're going to go ahead and apply this. I'm just using this cheap brush. I'm just going to go ahead and apply it to all of the engraved pieces. And the only thing you want to be careful of is to make sure that it doesn't run. And then you want this to dry pretty thoroughly. And see already it's got that nice color to it. Now because it's darkening that wood, the engraved part isn't going to contrast as much. And I sort of wished I would have um, engraved a little bit deeper so that it's darker. So I'll go ahead and do this to all of the pieces and show you what it looks like after it dries. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put the back panel on. And this is optional for the side panels, but I wanted to match the middle, mid panel because that has the same um, three millimeter plywood that is on here. So uh, I did manage to get some wood glue, so I'm gonna use wood glue. Again, you can use um, the E600 if you want, but for stuff like this that has a lot of surface area, I prefer just using a wood glue because it's cheaper and easier to get a lot of it out there. Make sure you put the right side on. Uh, if you buy the cheap wood from Home Depot, there's a unfinished side and this is the finished side. And I'm going to line up the top because that's what you're going to see the most. And I did cut this a little bit shorter. So I want to make sure that the top is the one that is lined up where it needs to be. 
And then I'm going to put some weight in the center as well. I did go ahead and do the midsection. And as you can see, I've clamped it all down. And there is a seam right down the middle. I might put a piece of tape on the inside of this. But you don't have to do that. So when you do use a laser to cut wood, um, the edges are charcoal like this. And you can get some... Um, a bunch of charcoal onto your fingers and stuff like that so a way to seal it is just to spray it with sealer I'm using uh, matte but you can use gloss if you want any kind of sealer that you want you can also paint this on if you desire either way it doesn't uh, matter too much but this is a way just to keep your fingers clean and to seal that in so I'll go ahead and just do that along the side all right, so I grabbed these from Lowe's. They are 3 quarter by 5 eighths inch because you need really thin ones for this section here. And there's four in a pack. But I also grabbed these bigger ones. Um, this is 2 inch by 1 and 3 eighths inch. I think this was $3. This is about uh, 3 or $4. These tiny screws for this hinge doesn't fit on my drill bit, so I'm using one of these smaller Phillips heads. Look, it separated it. So actually, I should have pre-drilled holes. That's what I'm going to do. I have to take these out. Still split a little bit, but that's better. So after putting on this bottom one, I realized that it's pretty strong, so I went ahead and replaced the top one. And I think it works actually pretty well with just two of them, these small ones. So I think I'm just going to keep these, rather, and I took the big one off. So just use the small ones. All right, I am grabbing some of this peaceful blue Rustoleum. And obviously you can uh, just brush on paint if you want, but I just happen to have this color, so I'm just gonna do this really quickly here. So just put an even coat across all of your wood and probably need two coats to make it even. So after painting we're going to go ahead and grab some of this blue tape, painter's tape and we're going to cover the entire thing. And you want to overlap just a little bit, not too much. I had to change rolls, and this is a different brand. That's why the blue is different. Putting on the final piece, and then just rub it through to make sure that it is all on there nice and tight. And then I just fold this over the edge, like so. All right, so I laser cut everything and as you can see um, in a couple of spots where there was overlap of the tape, it didn't quite go through the entire way. For example, this line right here. So I went through with an X-Acto blade and I just cut it at those spots, not bothering to remove it. But we'll see if that works or not. And um, you have to spray all the engraved parts with something dark like this. I was going to originally do orange, but my test strip of orange, it just, the background is so dark that the orange didn't show up and you have to soak it and that goes against it. You have want to do really light layers. So I'm going to do this dark blue called Evening Navy. And you just want to do really light coats because you don't want it to bleed underneath the tape. So it's better to do a couple of light coats than one really thick coat. Again, you don't want it to bleed.
Also go ahead and hit the edges, might as well, because all of that carbon along the edge, you want to set that in place. So let that light coat dry and then do um, a couple more coats. After the paint has dried, you go ahead, I just use a knife to peel off all of the tape. And there's something really satisfying about this process of revealing all of the different Uh, layers that you created and the bleed uh, isn't too bad as you look at these edges because that's one of the things I worried about was whether or not um, there was going to be a lot of bleed over I need to get back to it. now we're going to go ahead and glue in the magnets So there's a couple of spots where the paint went underneath the um, tape and so I'm just painting over that making some corrections with some acrylic paint that I mixed up trying to match the color it doesn't have to be perfect but just enough to be able to fix some spots here. All right, so you know what's super cool about these being cutouts? You can put actually colored paper behind it like this or switch out the colors depending on which one you think looks cool. And then with the spaceship one, I was thinking of either putting orange behind it for that retro color look or I got this spaceship background that I thought looked super cool there too. So, but you can swap these out obviously so you don't have to uh, commit, just cut it out and then just tape it on the back or you might not even have to tape it. You can just um, snap this in place with the magnets and it will hold in place. So super cool. All right, so I decided to highlight some of the um, sci-fi one with some orange. I do have um, Americana. The only reason why I'm using my miniature paint here, my Pro Acryl, is because the opacity and the coverage is a lot better. And um, you can use craft paints for this, especially if you have a light background like this light blue. But I just wanted a little bit more consistent coverage and that's why I'm going with my miniature paint. This is a lot more expensive than the craft paint. All right, so I think this is a little bit too light, so I went ahead and re-etched it and cut it out. And this time I did the etching a lot deeper and darker. And I did use the tape method for two reasons. One is there was a lot of um, sort of this dust from burning etching that got onto the wood, as you can see a little bit around here. But more importantly, I was thinking about spray painting this black just to make it darker, but I think I like sort of this dark brown from the burning and the etching, so I'm gonna keep that. And I'm going to go ahead and just per spray um, clear matte on it just to set it before I stain the wood. Otherwise, I'm afraid if I just stain it, all of that um, soot will be dragged around. So I just want to set this, set the edges as well with this. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm not going to show that, but uh, we'll go ahead and again stain this and put it side by side so you can see the comparison and how much darker this is. All right, look at the difference between these two. So here's the first one and then look at how much darker this one is. It just turned out way better. So not only did I cut this deeper, but also by masking and spraying that matte finish, clear finish over it, what it did was it sealed in all of the charred wood here 
because um, I think if you put the stain on, sometimes it will wipe away some of that char. So by sealing it first, it really um, made those parts super dark. So I like the contrast with this one um, way more than this one. I mean, this, because it's faded, it gives it more of an aged look, I feel like, which is fine. But I definitely um, prefer sort of this darker contrast on the wood here. So there you go. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if you're interested in tackling this project, if you have a diode laser that you have access to, this might be a super fun project, not only for yourself as a DM, but if you have a DM friend and you wanted to provide a awesome year end present, holiday present for them, then this might be the perfect project to be able to embark on. Thank you so much. Go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. I will be coming out with future videos as promised because I printed out these awesome 3D ships with my 3D printers for the game Traveler and we'll be coming out with those videos soon. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification too. Thank you so much. Happy gaming, happy lasering. We'll see you next time.